Hello and welcome back to an introduction to the Wolfram programming language. Today I will be covering symbols and variables. Now, every bit of output that the Wolfram programming language gives is a symbol. And to simply evaluate a given cell, which is your line of code or lines of code, you hold shift and hit enter and it'll return your argu or the result as out. To suppress output, simply put a semicolon, and it will not put an output. Or, if you need to run multiple bits of code, you can put a semicolon to separate lines of code. Like this, 7 plus 8 is 15, and 2 plus 5 is 7. Even function heads are a symbol that you can enter, and it will not panic. I can even query the information on what sign is. And it will tell me, sign is the function that gives the sign of Z. It also tells me that if I were to place it on the list, that it would distribute to the entries in the list. It is a function for numbers, and... I cannot edit this or delete it. <laughs> I can even put sign squared and it will not panic because it's a symbol. I can even query information on undefined variables or functions even. <laughs> In this case, just the global variable x is just simply that. There's no definition. The Wolfram programming language also likes to order symbols. Order it based on highest degree, or excuse me, lowest degree to highest, and I believe in alphabetical order. And in this case, I even a graph is a symbolic output. And a nice feature about Mathematica specifically is a suggestions bar that I can then change the theme or the mesh if I want to. I could change it so that it's about the height. This is pretty much a cone here, and that explains why each and every ring, or each and every particular height measured is a ring, because it's a consistent height at each and every ring. And it's nice that I can, you know, manipulate it and rotate it and view it from different angles, just by clicking and dragging. Even mathematical variables, or mathematical symbols, are easy to do. Simply backward slash, right bra or left bracket, I'm putting a dash for clarity reasons, and then say I want delta. Now, with this closing bracket, it should have changed to the lowercase delta, but because I put the dash, it didn't. But once I delete this dash, it will turn into lowercase delta. Or if I wanted capital delta, simply type capital delta, put your closing right bracket, and I have capital delta. Same with lowercase row. It's all the same here. Just type row, right bracket, and done. I can even do it for integrals if I feel like it. Except they are procured a little differently and still act as actual functions. To get the integral, I simply hit escape, I, N, T, and it will even bring up suggestions of other related ones. And I, N, T, T is the functional version of integral. Hit escape again, then click on this box, put in some argument. to put a particular variable with respect to integration and it will give me the exact antiderivative I expect, half cosine of t squared. Well, negative half cosine t squared. Now, moving on to variables, <laughs> let's talk about the two ways to define a variable. I can define it using set or set delayed. The key difference between the two is that when I use set for x1, x1 will evaluate the right side immediately. Set delay will evaluate the right side 
only when x2 is called. Now let's run these real quick and check what happens when I do y equals x1 squared. It gives 81, 81, 81 because when x1 is called, random integer has already been run once and x is defined as whatever random integer gave, in this case 9. And then y1 is instantly defined as whatever x1 was, so y1 is equal to 9 squared, or 81. And even in the case y2 is set delayed as x1 squared, I will still get 81 because x1 is still defined as 9. And even in the case y3 is equal to x2 squared, I will get something different but because it was an immediate set. Oh, by black magic, I still got 9. Realistically, though, if I run x2 again, I will actually get, or no, not that one. If I run y3 is equal to x2 squared, I should get something different. All 25s, because now this time, I got 5 for x2. And in the final case is where everything will change. y4 is set delayed as x2 squared, which means it will only evaluate upon call, meaning I get a jumbled list of different outputs, all of which are squares of some integer. Anyways, I hope this clarified what symbols and variables in the Wolfram programming language are capable of. Have a great day.